Hello, good morning guys, what's up? I'm Yalik, and this is today's Boone Beach video. Today is Monday, it was an extremely interesting weekend. Personally, nationally, <laughs> everything. Um, I've just finished my breakfast, which, among Yalik's other obsessions, uh, is food. So, my breakfast this morning was a kick-ass kimchi that I made myself. I love kimchi. Um, looked at a couple of apartments, liked one, hated another. Super Bowl was this weekend. Patriots lost. This makes us sad. I grew up about 20 minutes away from Foxborough. On the other hand, as my wife pointed out after, although the Patriots lost, my Friars won. And, being honest, they probably needed the win more than the Patriots ever would. On the other hand, the Patriots win would have been historic. And the Friars, they, you know, it's kind of run of the mill. So I don't know how I feel about that. But, whatever. Anyway, it was also an interesting weekend in Boom Beach. Last night was the Tribal Boost change cycling every two weeks last night at eight o'clock for me was uh, the tribal boost changeover and at eight o'clock nothing happened <laughs> uh, if you were online last night you would have seen each of these tribal regions you would click and you'd, and they they would say nothing they said nothing at all underneath it's the, where it says building health for example it just it didn't say anything there were just question marks three question marks and then if you clicked on these, uh, both of, of the buttons were grayed out like this. Um, so I waited around for a couple of hours. I had a whole bunch of resources stored up because uh, after my op hit yesterday, I did a masterpiece boost on my op hit. So I had a little bit of extra GBE going on, uh, damage going on. So I went and cleared my map. Um, so I had a whole bunch of resources and I was going to put them, I was going to boost up immediately, because I, I already maxed out the 4,800 crystals in the mine here. I was going to boost up immediately, and then um, refill my crystals with those resources I had built up. And um, that didn't end up working out, because Boom Beach, or Supercell, couldn't get its act together. Uh, I did wake up this morning to find that we have some pretty cool boosts going on. Um, so I've already done my supply chest and everything, as you can see. Uh, warrior health and warrior damage, so I obviously cranked that right up because I use those guys a lot. Basically, I think I did four or five warrior hits this morning. Um, that was last night. That was last night. So this morning, one, two, three, four warrior hits. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then also up here we have a power stone chance. So I cranked that up also. So 75% power stone chance. That is always a fun thing. So it has been a very weird and interesting weekend. Today is Monday and that means it is time for Hammerman Attacks. Which I know I said I wouldn't do too many of these videos. But you just, I don't know. I actually find it a lot more interesting. Nude. Uh, I find it a lot more interesting now than it was uh, when, when I still had ice, which kind of goes without saying. But um, yeah, we're good with that. That should get us through stage five anyway. Um, yeah, a lot more interesting now than when I had ice last week. Uh, I got through stage 6 alright, stage 7 took me two goes, um, the first one was abysmal, it was, I think it was just Rifleman, and maybe one Scorcher, if memory serves, and my first go on, excuse me, coffee break, my first try on stage 7 last week, um, was just flat out disaster. There were riflemen all over the place and I got just I hammered. Um 
but I had noticed there was an interesting, uh, like all of ha interesting pattern. All of Hammerman's defenses, or all of his GBE, was focused on one rocket launcher. Um, the one that I had forward, you'll see later in my uh, the advanced stages of Hammerman. I have a different layout. And uh, all of his GBE was concentrated on a rocket launcher up here in the front right corner of my base. And then um, I think he threw critters back here. And the, there's a rocket launcher that lives up there. And um, so I had to make sure that rocket launcher got defended. I had to, I swapped the shock launchers. Um, oh, no, the rocket launcher, up, the shock launcher up here was fine. He killed the shock launcher back here, and I wanted that one to survive because that one does more damage later on in the raid. So I just ended up swapping those two, making sure the shock launcher back in the corner had a little bit of extra defense. And then up front, I just tweaked my hotbot a tiny bit because I noticed he had thrown a shock and clipped one of them along the way. Um, so I just moved one hot pot so it would be out of range of his shock because that's the way L L Lieutenant Hammerman attacks are not intelligent. They're not intended to be. He will always do the same pattern of attacks. He will attack the same tower. He will throw a shock you know, I mean, his shocks, his barrages, they will go to the same towers. So, if, for example, he was uh, targeting just this sniper tower and I wanted it to survive, um, I could, you know, move it off to a corner somewhere. Or swap for another one, just put it in a different place. You know, just, yeah, whatever. And then he barrages just that, and life goes on. Um, I don't actually... Nobody cares about sniper towers. That's not the point here. But um, anyway, just tiny, tiny little tweaks like that can make all the difference in the world in this event, um, which makes, which is, you know, what makes it more interesting. Now, again, this is with no ice. I do have the two hot pots. Uh, basically, I keep them around for this. And we're gonna put this in a faster mode because those guys are going to get chewed up by those hot pots, which is why they're there, of course. Um, if, if a little explanation of this layout, uh, I use this for Hammerman 1 through 5, generally, and uh, settled on the hot pots. They're also, the hot pots are also kind of useful. I try to make it harder. I place them in my base so that it's at least a little harder for people to park if they're doing bullet hookah attacks or all zooka attacks. Um, but basically, they are for this. So, obviously the hot pot's out front in this layout, HQ way to the back, uh, just a little bit of splash damage back there, that is for uh, rockets or uh, riflemen that sneak through. Um, up front, you'll notice all the mines are lined up because Hammerman never does anything tricky or sneaky like smoking, he just drops. So, all the mines are lined up on the beach and then I have set up... Uh, basically two rows, the hot pots are out front, and those are gonna, those are there to eat up for things like riflemen and zookas, and I've set up two rows of economy buildings, and that is pure distraction. That is intended to, ooh, what do we have here? That is intended to, boo, well, I knew it wasn't gonna be great anyway, because I already have a max one, whatever. <laughs> um, but, 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 but. That, these buildings are out front here just to, to take up Hammerman's time, and while his troops are shooting at these, uh, my stuff back here, all of my defenses are shooting at his troops. That is the long and short of this layout. Um, splash damage and uh, fire damage up front. Uh, the one-hitters more to the back in case anything gets through, and finally that, that rocket launcher is the final line of defense way in the back of the base. Um, doesn't end up figuring in too heavily. What are we on? Five, and it's going to be riflemen. And that shouldn't be a problem because of the hot pots. Briefly, before we, since we're talking about defenses anyway, before we finish this video, um, when they finally got the tribe boosts going in the game, 
the boost this week turned out to be warrior health and one of my teammates in my task force complained that it's going to be two weeks of warrior raids which is true and I know that because I'm going to be doing many of them um, so very briefly when we finish this um, I'm going to explain I'm going to show his base and explain how we got for six and we'll give it a we'll give it a go with this layout. See what happens. Um, we'll ber I'll very briefly explain how to defend yourself over the next couple of weeks against people like me who will be throwing warriors at your base pell mell because warriors are all awesome. Warriors and bullet are one of the best things about this game for me right now. I've had so much fun with that strategy. If you don't have a shield up, uh, I'm coming for you, and I'm bringing warriors. Wow, look at the hot pots doing work, I'm just melting these guys. Holy, wow. Stage 6 does not usually go down that easy. Didn't even get past the, the two hot pots. They got one of them. They didn't get the second one. Um, part of the reason I had so much trouble last week, though, was stage, one of the stages. I think it's stage 7. Now, it couldn't have been all, couldn't have been all riflemen in this scorcher. I think there were, um, heavies and Hammerman, depending on the way he drops them, that could be a problem or not, but he dropped the heavies in front. If that wasn't last week, then that might have been, that was a week recently. Um, I should have busted out my other layout for you just so you could have seen that, but we'll see what this one does. Um, and that was a problem because heavies do eat up a bunch of damage. I mean, he could throw a rifleman at these hot pots all day, and that's, you know, that's his loss, not mine. Um, so far, so good here. I'm really not worried about the tanks at all in this attack. All those one-hitters sitting at the back of this layout are going to destroy them. So really, the problem is rifles. And we still have a hot pot going, so that's not bad. Now, that rear rocket launcher is going to figure here. Yeah, I don't know. I think we're good. Pity. Actually, I wouldn't have minded losing, so I can I can at least show you my my hammerman layout for stage six and seven when it's when it gets tough. Wow! All right, we actually won that. Um, this is a, I mean it's it's a layout I've adapted from somebody else. I mean that's how this game goes. Somebody has a good idea and eventually it gets passed around. Um, let's break that out. Load, that doesn't matter. Clear, whatever. Um, so this layout is what I was talking about earlier. Um, usually have the hot pots, again, right out front. Last week, uh, this hot pot was being shocked. So I had just had to move it. I moved it over to the left where that flamethrower is, I think. Um, this was the rocket launcher I was talking about that he... I wanted to survive, I needed that at the end of his attack, and he blasted that down. So I swapped this rock with the this shock with the front shock, and that was all. And then back here I just made sure the flamethrower was uh, defending the rocket. Uh, the minefield there, hugely effective. This one I'm not quite as happy with, this little minefield over here. I'm not quite as happy with, and I'll probably be adjusting that. Um, actually, let's do it right now, since we're on this layout. There we go. Um, the troops, most of the troops in this, in this layout, what, what makes this work is that, again, hammerman attacks are not intelligent. He doesn't flare. So, some of his troops will follow along this way. Obviously, I've set up the shoreline to chew up as many riflemen as possible. That's usually what you're seeing in Hammerman 6 and 7. Uh, back here, final line of defense, two splash damage towers, and the shock. Uh, some of his troops will follow along this line of buildings, and hopefully clip some of those mines, and meanwhile get torched by the rocket launchers. The majority of his troops are going to follow because the majority of my towers are on this side, they're going to follow this path. And they will just arc around the base. They don't do anything clever, they just arc around the base. 
and that will lead them ultimately into my minefield which is set up uh, to to snag them and it works wonderfully well actually and like I said some minor tweaks but it is a great layout for beating hammermen and, and you know with without ice uh, load alright so lastly before I go so here's my friend Casey and he complains those tribal boosts non-stop warrior base raids for two weeks blah well good for me bad for him but I took a look at his base and uh, if you're trying to defend against the warrior raids you need to do a few things first of all it would be a deterrent to have a shield he does not um, second of all he has a grappler and that's good he has a blaster and that's good but the grappler's badly placed that grappler honestly should be somewhere well away from the HQ it could be over here you want it to pull bullet away from the warriors you want it to just yank him right out of the scene so it could be over here it could be over here it could be back here it could be anywhere just not right near the HQ you can put it way to the back of the base because if bullet gets yanked back here where this stone storage is then he's not protecting your ta his taunt is not protecting the warriors anymore um, I had suggested to this fellow Casey uh, maybe swapping the gold storage with uh, or, or the grappler with any of his gold storages this one this one this one any of those would work because that would that yanks bullet well off to the side so shield move the grappler and then finally the last thing you want to do um, he has the blaster and that's good but it's not good the way he has placed his blasters and shock launchers um, right now I could do I mean this base would be uh, three shocks I would shock the grappler although in that position it doesn't necessarily even need to be and then an easy shock here to get these two towers and an easy shock or an easy shock over here to get those two towers you don't want to set your base up so that you that the, these three towers in particular are very crucial for trying to stop warrior attacks uh, the shock ability keeps bullet from getting his taunt off so if he took this blaster and moved it say up to the front of his base somewhere maybe about here where this mortar is uh, I would be unable to shock the blaster with either of his two shock launchers and it would still be in range to fire at bullet bullet would be parked in a warrior attack typically somewhere right around here and the blaster's range is easily wide enough to uh, reach to that area. So, move the shock launch, move the shock blaster forward somewhere. Probably, I'd say, move that shock launcher a little further away from his HQ because it is missing a little portion of the HQ. Uh, between the two shock launchers, they cover the whole thing, but I don't think you need to even. Yeah, just move that a little further away. Move this up here. Move grappler somewhere off to, anywhere off to the side um, that should help because that makes that makes the base much more uh, intimidating if you're going to try warriors shield move that blaster move that grappler uh, because if the grappler's way over here and the blasters up there now I'm looking at um, way too many shocks I don't I can't do four shocks that doesn't work for me uh, even three with critters, that's that's a bit of a stretch. Um, so yeah, I'm going to enjoy the next couple of weeks. Uh, that's a way that you can too, even if you don't use warriors. So anyway, um, fun weekend should be should be an interesting week. They're all interesting though, right? Anyway, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up, drop me a comment, say hi. I'm Yalik, and I'm off to work. Have a great day.